Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So uh, this is going to be one of today's Libra readings. I'm doing it again because now uh, readings are all about the interpretation. So the reading that I had previously done for Libra uh, could already be somebody's reading and somebody could draw something from that. Um, now big spoiler alert, I didn't really know what the reading was saying to me until I finished watching season four of Villanelle. <laughs> and, uh, sorry, not Villanelle, what's it called? Uh, Killing Eve. And uh, the imagery of the final scenes of Killing Eve, um, like the closing of that story, very much visually came through in the cards. And I was like, that's what I was predicting. That's what that was. So very, it felt very strong to me. And now I do this occasionally where I predict stuff, it comes out in readings, and then I'll watch a movie, I'll watch a film, and it'll be what I've been predicting. So uh, I know that I'm definitely 100% predicting stuff. It's just sometimes it's what am I predicting? And is it just a TV show? So so, um, I don't know, again, there's a lot of stuff in that reading and it could be, there could still be different things in there for different people. A lot of stuff is like, it can be interpreted in different ways. So I don't want to take down the reading. There's nothing wrong with it. It just it doesn't feel fair to let that reading go up for Libra, knowing, like, knowing that I predicted <laughs> Killing Eve. Uh, so uh, yeah, so I'm redoing the reading and who knows what I'm predicting today. Um, it feels like it was a message for me. It feels like it was almost confirmation for me, like, um, you know, this is working. You are predicting things. Um, you know, here is your evidence. Like to me, if I need it, that yes, you are predicting things. Yes, the cards are telling you things. Uh, it's almost like reassurance for me that, that this is working. It's just sometimes I get into the, well, why? <laughs> why am I, you know, I don't know. Let's keep going anyway. So Libra, this reading immediately is making more sense to me, where the other one was quite confusing to me. Um, it does seem to be talking about... Now, it could be Romeo and Juliet type storylines, you know, two houses alike in dignity, um, in fair Verona where we lay our scene, uh, which came through in the other Libra reading with um, a lot of pain. Um, so again, I get huge spoiler alert for Killing Eve. Um, it does end in tragedy. And I was talking about that in the other reading about, uh, it's kind of the thing that really hits me is when uh, there's this kind of almost destined fated romance and somebody dies, um, you know, that kind of Othello, Romeo and Juliet, um, what else? Uh, Pyramus and Thisbe, if you want to take it at n not the comedy level, but the actual original tragedy of that story. Um, and all these references that, that were coming out in the other reading, um, you know, ill-fated, destined soulmate romances and things like that. So the other reading, I was coming into it with a huge amount of pain. Like every time I tried to sit and do that re reading, it was painful. And I was very much picking up on how those kind of stories make me feel and how emotional I was at the end of Killing Eve uh, because it's a tragedy. So um, yeah, this reading isn't coming in with the same feeling. This reading is coming in uh, almost a lot more practical, um, quite um, empowering, I want to say Libra. So now you've either got, it, it could go lots of different ways, but the two main way, ways that I'm reading it, if I just kind of show you this tidy house, uh, yeah, they're trying to get us to tidy our house again, like lazy Libras, do we want to? Um, so it's, it's looking at this idea of like family trees, right? Um, and two houses, right? And then the third house is your tree. So this is your family, the family you're creating. So now it could be talking about two branches of your personal family tree. So your mother's fam you know, your mother's tree and your father's tree, right? Two houses coming together to create you, Libra. Or it could be talking about um, and you and your family tree, right? And the, the people that you join your roots with and, and the connections you forge and the, the family that you create and the house you create right um seeing that as a separate branch entirely of a family tree perhaps for others of you it could be that you and your partner right uh, you and your partner creating your own household um may have warring families like Romeo and Julia so it could be the two branches like your parents your mother and fathers could come from like you could be the offspring basically of Romeo and Julia and your parents are from two different family trees who didn't get along or um you you're creating this for somebody else right so just generally they're talking talking about um 
the creation of your own family unit, the creation of your own life, being the ruler of your own kingdom, right? Um, and the creator of that um, and deciding what you take forward and what you leave behind in the past and what you give to your children and all these kinds of things. So, um, yeah, this trust in divine detours is talking to me a little bit about, because um, there's a lot of stuff here about... <sighs> creating this tree so if I just kind of show you visually the way this is looking to me um it's like the this is the branches of the tree right the two branches uh or the two main branches coming up and then this is the root system the snake down here is talking to me about putting down the roots um and it's talking to me about trusting divine detours is saying to me that there could be some kind of blockage or some kind of problem or some kind of obstacle uh, in regards to your family or this situation that you're trying to create so as you're trying to put down roots you may be it's very metaphorical so bear with me as you're trying to put down roots you could be hitting like blockages right so things that your root system cannot go through but what roots do is they're very very clever and they go around the obstacles right so instead of going through it's like going around and there's a lot of flow and ease to that it's like if you're facing uh if you're facing um opposition um you don't have to stubbornly push through uh like a, like a taurus perhaps you know your, your shared venus sign uh but you you can um you just go around it right very very easily and very flowing but in a very earthy way you are feeling very very earthy again at the start of my meditation for the other libra reading you were coming through as part of this rock or or attached to this rock you're coming through with this earth energy of being very very fixed and very very rooted and very very firm but still flexible like bamboo right you keep coming through with this um firm but flexible energy uh like bamboo so firm but flexible and the same thing with um if you ever watch a tree branching upwards um if there's something in the way perhaps uh, an overhanging rock the branches will just curl around and carry on going right so it's this firm but flexible um so um it, it, that's what that's saying to me about your personality your ability to um almost take life in your stride in a very practical um easy going and um creative um and problem solving kind of way you know you have that ability to it's like you have your intention you have what you want to do um you want to grow you want to have that growth um and if there's opposition you will find ways to get around that opposition you will find ways to continue to grow um in defiance of anything that is trying to prevent you from doing so um it's like what you're focused on which i'd want to say is this it feels like almost like mental clarity, mental clarity, mental organization. Like what, what you focus on will grow is, is basically the message of that. Now, it could be that there is some kind of ancestor helping you. I have been feeling uh, particularly one of my male ancestors al along my patriarchal line kind of coming through and visiting me and and helping me with more practical matters because um if you know me i'm not i i'm not very good at the kind of the queen of pentacles energy I, I can be if it's if i put all my focus on it but it doesn't come naturally to me it's a challenge for me so to um to be in that very organized practical earth energy um Again, it's my Capricorn Lilith placement. It, I always feel like it's like imposter syndrome. It's not something that comes naturally to me. It's something that I have to um, almost force myself to do or, 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 or think extra hard about those things where it comes naturally to other signs or other placements. So it's like this very practical, maybe somebody who's good with money, maybe somebody who's good with practical matters, maybe somebody who's good with business, for, the, for those of you who are starting a new business or something like that, um, coming into you and supporting you. Now, it, there's something coming through about um, men and women, like a man's world. So if, if, go and look at the, the 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 songs in the description box if you want to know more about this. But um, there's stuff coming through about like a man's world and um, traditionally um, masculine <sighs> roles. Um, so I've been looking actually at my own family tree and uh, um, some of my ancestors did run a business, but 
it's always the men's names. It's the men's names on the paperwork. It's the men's, um, you know, it's, it's all the men running this business. And I'm like, well, what were the women doing? Uh, you know, just sitting around the house looking pretty. What? Where's the information about the females? Like they haven't left that imprint that the men have because, you know, the men are the ones with the names on the deeds and this kind of thing. Um, so why should it be the men who are running the businesses? Why should it be that property was, you know, in if we're talking, you know, ancestrally, history, historically, why would the property be passed down the male line? Why would, you know, if you want to talk about kings and queens, why is it that... Um, if a king or a queen has several children, um, the crown gets passed down through the males before it goes to the females. If you want to look at Henry VIII, uh, you know, it goes through age, but before age, it goes through gender. So you could have five boys and it'd be like the crown gets passed down to the oldest boy, the second, the third, the fourth, and then it'll go to the girls, right? So uh, why is that? Why was property held by men? Why what is that about the man's world that the women should be disenfranchised you know so and then you know if you look at Henry VIII and Queen Elizabeth his daughter she was an epic ruler she was one of the longest reigning monarchs of England and uh, although there was a lot of empire and things that were bad about her reign uh, she was you know in terms of what made a good ruler at that time she was brilliant right she did a great job <laughs> so um you know like a, a woman can do the job of, of a man is coming is coming through um, and that kind of thing of, um, I don't know. So I personally, again, talking about different ways that this could come through for you. Um, in my family, um, of my generation, we're all girls, right? So um, technically that kind of, the male name, if you want to talk about getting married and, and whether or not you keep, whose name do you keep, Um Technically, if I was to get married, or my children wouldn't have my f family name because it would be my partner's name. Where I, I don't know. It's like I would definitely want to re keep my family name, right? It means a lot to me. I don't want to. I don't want to get married and like change my last name and become property of another family. So I don't know. Like everybody's choice is their own choice. But I think there's a lot of questions being raised in your reading about. Um, Traditions that we accept. Um, I, th I believe Spanish culture tends to have uh, double barrel names more, um, like different cultures and and how people deal with these problems. Because obviously we can't have a continuous, uh, you know, we keep, can't keep just adding names <laughs> into our last name. It wouldn't fit on the forms, right? So it's like, well, what name do we have? And is it fair that a woman should take a man's name and almost like join his family like chattel? Chattel? Chattel, is that the word? So I don't know. There's a lot of interesting questions coming out with this reading already. Um, so, and I can think about my nana as well. My nana on my dad's side and, um, you know, what, what names she puts on cards and things like this. And... Uh, you know, buying into those traditional values. Uh, I don't know. So, you seem to have made your mind upon something here, Libra, and you seem to be very strong. Uh, so, especially for my fem female Libras, Libra is uh, is a cardinal sign, which is boss energy, right? <laughs> we wear the trousers, and. Um, Libra is a masculine sign. Now, don't worry about gender so much as the energy of that kind of yin-yang energy, right? So Libra as a masculine sign, as a cardinal sign, is uh, quite a domineering sign, actually, which, you know, a lot of people don't realise about Libras. But anyone who knows Libras and knows people who have a lot of Libra in the chart, surprisingly firm, right? But they do it in a very soft soft gentle way a soft kind of cajoling encouraging way but Libras quite often do get what they want um because they know how to right they've got the, the charm to uh they've got the charm they've got the diplomacy they've got the um again Libra will get their own way if you we think about um the branch right the tree growing the tree wants to grow that's what's natural for the tree the tree wants to uh spread its um spread its branches and have that growth and reach the reach the things that it wants to reach uh so if there's an obstacle um again a, a sign like taurus what a taurus is going to do is going to keep 
headbutting that rock until it <laughs> until it makes a groove in the rock and finally like pushes through. Uh, Libra will um, very gently, but still getting their own way, move around the rock. Right? It's like fine. The rock wants to be there. I want to grow. The rock wants to be there. Let's find a way around this. Let's problem solve. So it's coming through as this amazing metaphor. Uh, now, going back to your family tree or these two houses, whatever that is for you, you and your your family and your partner's family, or you know your parental and maternal line, or I don't know, it could be even joining two businesses, joining two properties. However, it's coming through for you. Again, this is number one, right? I want to say that you're in control of this. You have, you know, you you are putting your uh, house first. Uh, but I want to draw your attention up here to these two houses um, and how. Uh, one is perhaps um, perhaps has more money than the other. So this one looks like it um, is kind of like Tudor. Um, it's got all these additions to it. So it looks like quite a fancy house. You know, it's it's had money invested in it. Over here, we have something that looks more like a simple shack. So this is talking to me about whatever these two families are or two sides or two houses. Um, one could have a lot more money than the other, basically. Um, and it's this is kind of reinforced by this six of earth. Where again, if you look at the two branches, right? So the two this is you right in your root system of whatever it is that you're creating so this is representing you uh, and also with it being a stag as, stag as well it's emperor energy it's leadership energy so uh being the leader in your own family um but these two branches right whatever these are for you again um if we look at the pentacles this one has one to three pentacles on it saying that it's more wealthy than this other house which has one pentacle on it so again it could be that uh, perhaps your maternal or paternal line one of your branches has more money uh, if you this is you and your partner one of you may come from a much more um, wealthy background than the other um, because the six of pentacles the six of earth does talk about um, one branch having the ability to give more and the other branch needing to receive more uh, it's a giving and receiving uh, card but it's it's not a card the card isn't inherent inherently equal uh the six of pentacles makes something equal it makes something fair so it could be that you have received more money from one side of your family tree than you have from the other um or more resources or more investment or something like this but i want to say if it's been unequal there could be something that is being made right because what's happening here is we find that Although the house on the left is the wealthier house, it has more resources at its disposal. It's in a it's in a position to give. What's actually happening is that everything is coming from the poorer house. So do you see this gold that's coming down? So it's like the 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 house that's less able to give has actually been giving the most. Is the way that this card is is. Um, speaking today so there could be a correction of that coming in for you um now you do have this feeling of being um compressed or trapped or something like this because the medicine wheel here is talking to me about um a cramped space like too many people in a small space so it could be that your your home your living situation is getting a bit cramped um, again you could would it be in a tidy house clarity and organization it may just be a case of um, you've got too much clutter you've got too much stuff do you need to uh, you know send some stuff to charity do you need to go through and kind of organize and kind of decide what's going to charity what needs to be thrown away and kind of just get stuff out of the house to give yourself more room like yes <laughs> that I need to do that I always need to do that it's an ongoing problem and but it could also be talking about um, kind of as the root system grows you know you, the actual spaces in between the root system gets too cramped so you may need to I'm thinking about like plants right and repotting plants like um, a plant can only grow as big as the container that it's placed in because the roots only have so much room to spread out in so if you want that plant to continue growing you have to repot it into a bigger plant so that the roots can grow more and so that the plant can grow bigger so it may be time to repot libra is what i, I want to say so it could be that you need to uproot and move home um, and get a bigger house or move to a environment where you have more space to grow if it's not a house it could be something to do with like work 
or um, some sort of environment for you where um, you're feeling a little bit like you're hitting those obstacles right so like glass ceiling kind of energy you're hitting those obstacles so how are you going to grow around them uh, are you going to have to get you know almost like grow your roots out of the pot and kind of lift yourself out and kind of walk off to to plant yourself in firmer soil but it is telling me that you know maybe you need to add more bedrooms maybe you need to um consider moving or expanding your house in some sort of way it could also be your family but i am seeing this as like being very cramped <laughs> in a small space so um It seems to me something about people getting out of that environment as well. So it's like the first person or the first creature that escapes this cramped space is this snake. Um, so again, the snake is an energy of um, something that um, grows, but it has to shed its skin in order to keep growing, right? So that continued growth. So again, thinking about repotting a plant, right? The snake grows out of that tight skin the the eventually the skin dies and the snake wriggles out of it and um you know continues to grow so um shedding your skin like shedding off um something that's old and um stifling to you um and continuing to grow but it's it's kind of like sneaking out the back door almost or kind of um embedding itself into the roots um the next creature that escapes from this environment is the 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 hawk like creature so here it's an eagle and here it's a hawk but i'm seeing it as the same creature today so it's like it's um again there's this thing about going down into the earth and going up into the air so the, the hawk um with the wind is telling me it's kind of talking about having a higher perspective it's talking about the growth of the branches the uh, the ability to think to strategize to uh, be very creative libra if you think about air being uh, swords energy it's all to do with the mind and um innovate innovation and strategy and um creative thinking um and this higher perspective right so it's almost like going up into the branches of the tree and seeing something from from higher so again it could be looking at your own family tree or your own family history or your parentage um how you were raised having a higher perspective on that and um, seeing how um your history your family history perhaps or your cultural history has um influenced you and um created the situation that you're in now is the way it's coming through uh so yeah this taking to the air energy and gaining a higher perspective now what happens next is we have this mermaid coming in with this offer now the four of water is the four of cups it does appear that you are being asked to it's like you are being offered something here um now normally the four of cups says don't miss out on an opportunity don't miss out on an offer but there's instinctively there's something to be cautious about with this offer because pearls to me are you are the diamond basically libra you're you always come through with diamond energy which is something that's uh, very hard something that's very precious um you know you are multifaceted uh the pearl talks to me about something that can easily be dissolved right so it's not something that is permanent like you're permanent it's not something that is um fixed and rooted and firm it's something that is transitory and um almost like false gold energy is the way it comes through for me so just be careful about um receiving something um being offered something from perhaps an emotional place or there's something on offer but there's emotions attached to it now it could be guilt or something like this so um with this being on either side of this tidy house this tree it could be again like money um, or things that are practical or something that is emotional um in this instance it's like the money is something it's a resource that can be applied it's something that's firm it's something that isn't going anywhere where the emotional offer seems to be something that is um not it's not as long lived right it's transitory so just be aware of that is there a way mm, it seems like neither offer is good for you because of what comes next so just 
it feels like getting a higher perspective on something perhaps one side of your family tree is very emotion based and the other side is very uh kind of pentacles based uh you know one works with money and things and practicality and the other side works with uh but this feels right so there could be a choice coming up for you that you know you feel like it's not a balanced choice because each side is missing something from the other so i want to say there's something that you could potentially do to alchemize it into some it's like you need both right um for a tree to grow you need the fertilizer and you need the rain you know you need both it's not going to grow if you have elements missing is is perhaps the message of that and I do want to say you want to put your own tree first you want to put your own house first you want to put your own situation first because it's the number one card so you know you are perhaps seeing something here with Pegasus and transcending from a higher perspective um because you're focusing I want to say on your own tree but there could be something that's trying to shift your focus so just be wary of that it feels like a little bit of a because it's trust trust in divine detours focus and this is it's almost like this is you're being asked to focus on this right you're being asked to look over here so i want to say that if your focus is being shifted onto something else with it being trust in divine detours although it's a, a bit tricky I do think it's something you want to investigate. I don't think it's an opportunity that you want to miss out from. But I do feel like you have a higher perspective where you are... You're not going to be easily swayed from your fixed position, I want to say. But there could be something interesting in it for you that you want to consider. So if your focus is being shifted onto something else and it's emotional, um, do at least have a look at it I want to say now I feel like there is a choice point coming up for you and I feel like this could be feeling torn between two households right um I want to say that the choice that you're making here Libra is a very very Libran choice to to stay in the middle ground I, I don't think you're going to shift position so again if you're being pulled by two I don't know if you're being asked to make a decision between two parents, perhaps, or you are asked to make a decision between two families or two different living situations or two, ha whatever that is for you, these two energies that seem to be influencing you, but also blocking you, right? They're blocking your growth because um, it's like as much as you draw from them, you're also almost being asked to choose one or the other and I want to say that you're refusing to do that because because you're Libra because you are middle ground energy because you are the diplomat you are the sign that can really see both sides and understand both sides and understand both situations um, and while you can empathize and while you can have compassion and understanding for everybody involved in a situation Libra I want to say that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to pick sides or choose between them or shift position at all you know if your position is the middle ground position if your position is sitting on the fence then that is a position right you're just choosing the third position which is your own position i want to say so because we have this standstill and earth so you really feel like you're firmly planting yourself in that middle ground um refusing to choose between the two branches uh, because you you are focused on your house right you're not choosing between these i don't know what that was <laughs> somebody doing some building work i think uh you, you this you are in the third position so even though this is almost disguised as well it's almost like part of the scenery it's part of the nature it could easily be overlooked by these fancier houses it's it's it is your position it's where you're rooted and it's where you're fixed right it's yours so you're not going to choose either of these doors because you see a third way you see a way that bypasses or uh incorporates or um it's like you're waiting for that 
<laughs> can you see how it's like <sighs> when the tree is starting to grow you know when the, the tree is quite small it may just the branches may just reach to here uh, which may be causing you to think you, you have to choose one of these two paths um but it's like you will see that you can go around these. You don't have to choose either one of those doors. You can forge your own route, right? As you continue to grow, you can stretch out into this space that hasn't been created yet. Because you have, because the tree continues to grow up and around and above, right? It grows higher than whatever these obstacle trees, uh, houses were. And also because here, it's like the earth is you, right? The earth is you with your with your roots firmly planted, um, standing your ground or sitting on that fence very, very firmly because you can see the future potential of the third root. It's like that door, that... Hmm. How do I explain this? Um, right, so one, if you pay attention to the doors, these two doors have kind of a curved roof. Uh, and if you look at the two doors on these houses, they have this kind of curved, um, well, that was a flat door, but they, the doors kind of resemble the two doors on this, this card here. But I want to say you understand perhaps instinctively, or perhaps because you have this higher perspective that you're being asked to go into somebody else's space here, right? It's not, it's, look at my color of my, my fingernails as well. I didn't even realize that I'd done that. It's like you're being asked to. It's it's like which if you go through one of those doors, this is going to be the situation, right? Because you're in somebody else's space, and that space is, it's like those plant pots are too small for the expansion that you have in mind. Um, so either, both of those roots are going to uh, oppress you or uh, stunt your growth in some sort of way. So you are very with that higher perspective right with this going above and seeing things from above and seeing the whole lay of the land you're actually realizing that the true space the true area for expansion are is all the spaces in between right it's all the spaces around the two things that are already established the things that are already already established already have created their space um and that space is fixed your potential space, the space that you can potentially grow in, is outside of the already established fixed spaces. Right? It's all of this. Like it's like unlimited expansion because you're not choosing one of the places that's already been claimed. You're choosing the um the the bigger area, the bigger space around it. Um and you can because if you look closely here, it's like uh, it's almost creating a kind of tree here. So it's this tree that hasn't been, it hasn't been established yet, right? This roots that hasn't been established yet, but you see the potential of it. It's like you, you're, can you see how this door is much, much bigger than the two doors on the cards? So it's like the, this door is your ability, your, um, your potential space. Uh, it's like to create to use the resources of the entire world or the resources that have been entirely overlooked by these two systems is the way it's coming through. So you are planting your feet firmly in your ground. You are planting your feet firmly in that soil. You are staking your claim to this territory because you can see how much space there is to expand there um, and how much potential there is. And just to kind of show you again what I mean here, um, this door has the this door that's your door has the the archway. It has the 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 archway that comes to a point, which is this here. Um, so yeah, you're doing something. You're going your own way. You're planting your roots very very firmly in the ground. You're claiming your territory because there's a huge amount of potential that you see, and you understand that being outside of the constraints or the borders of those two situations the thing that you create the thing that you are um planting the roots of has the ability to be a great big tree right a huge tree a tree that is not um stunted because of the confines of the already established situations 
what was that reading? Okay, so you're getting a lot of interesting songs through as well, which will be in the description box down below. So uh, the song that mainly came through as the overarching song for your reading is Big Yellow Taxi. It's Rita Ora's version, but it's that song, They Paved Paradise and Put Up a Parking Lot. Um, right? So uh, this kind of tree and nature symbolism is really interesting. The The parking lot is can only ever be a parking lot. But if you cut down the trees, you know, you're stunting the growth. I don't know. Um, I'm particularly bothered because um, my son's school used to have uh, four or five really big trees on the playing field uh, that provided a lot of shade. So, for example, for sports day, the kids would line up and sit under the, the trees because of the shade. It protected them from the sun. But sadly, I don't know. I, I think there's been some kind of problem with the trees. One of them did fall down. Um, so I don't know if they've got some kind of tree illness but they've chopped down all the trees um again it could be potential health and safety they were like right we need to chop them down because you know we don't want them to fall down but at the same time now they don't have any protection from the sun uh because all the shade has gone so i would say that's quite probably a bigger risk so again it could be talking about um sometimes following the rules um it's kind of like uh, Freakonomics. If you've ever read the book Freakonomics, um, definitely recommend it. Freakonomics, like economics, but it's freak. Uh, it's like false economy, right? Or people being reactive without having that higher perspective of looking at all the factors of a situation. So there could be something like that. Uh, yeah, Big Yellow Taxi, Pig, Paradise and Pulper Parking Lot. You've also got All for Love. Everything I did, I did it for love, you know, uh, by Madison Beer. Uh, cherish uh, by Madonna. Um, Give me joy, my boy, I will always cherish you. So tired of broken hearts and losing at this game. Before I, I start this dance, I take a chance in telling you I want more than just romance. You are my destiny. You know, so again, this kind of idea of destiny and Romeo and Juliet coming through. Um, Man's World by Marina and the Diamonds. I don't want to live in a man's world anymore. That also talks about Mother Nature, Mother Nature's dying. Um, and uh, Therefore I Am by Billie Eilish. Um, I'm not your friend. You know, you, you think you're a man, but you think, well, I think therefore I am. It's like, I don't know. It's um, There's this rejection of that kind of patriarchal system. And this isn't, like, if you're a guy watching this as well, I'm not saying that men are bad, you know. Um, equal rights doesn't mean that one gender trumps the other or any gender trumps the other. It's 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 saying that there should be space for everybody. Should be space for everybody to grow into their full potential uh, and not be boxed in by, perhaps it could even be traditional gender roles, right? The, the male gender role, the female gender role. Um, I was explaining to my daughter about the Curse of Sonorum in ancient Rome and the options that were available for men and the options that were available for women. And for both, they were extremely limited, right? There were only certain paths that were open and available. And sometimes you need the people who forge the unexpected paths. Sometimes you need the people who open up new routes for others to follow uh, that could be very much outside the box because this is almost, even though it's a circle, it's kind of like representing that kind of in the box, traditional, uh, limited thinking. That I want to say you're breaking three free from uh, and feed the tree by belly um, so I clarified the choice um, I said what is this choice about what's this standstill choice about uh, and they gave me feed the tree so take your hat off boy when you're talking to me and be there when I feed the tree so again there could be something about uh, ancestry um, all right so Libra that's what I've got for you when I'm not predicting uh killing Eve <laughs> um and I hope this was helpful to somebody uh yeah do take care of yourselves oh I'm on the underline here as well I kind of forgot to mention you've got this lost in space needing direction um so it, an encouragement again I feel like you <laughs> maybe we do need to tidy our house <laughs> I don't want to um but it could be and again that's a very traditional role i was watching something about cinderella before as well um it's by a a uh youtube channel called the take um and it talks about how um people who almost you'll have to go and watch it it's, it's talking about rethinking how we think about cinderella so not seeing cinderella as a victim but actually understanding that her strengths are traditional feminine strengths of kindness and uh, creativity and um, perseverance and patience and you know all these traditionally feminine virtues that have kind of gone out of fashion um, you know people say oh Cinderella she should have 
you know, shouted at her stepmother and she should have done this and done that. But if you actually watch that video, it talks about how, A, that's victim blaming, you know, uh, and not actually taking into account the situation that she's in, which is, a, you know, we are told in that movie that it's abusive. Um, and also that um, it, it actually devalues the feminine, the feminine strengths um, in favour of the in favor of the masculine strengths and also uh by doing so it's it's disenfranchising both the both men and women to value um almost those toxic toxic masculinity strengths of she should do this she should do that um without valuing the the more subtle feminine strengths that she has i don't know something like that you can go and watch it I'll, if i remember i'll put the video link in the description box but again it's talking about um should should a woman stay at home and tidy the house you know is that what a woman should traditionally do or perhaps a woman can get into investment banking um but again there could be some ancestor around you who is encouraging you and supporting you uh if you feel a little bit lost and you feel like you need some direction it's almost this change of direction or change of thinking especially in terms of perhaps traditional uh traditional gender roles i want to see you see you see a different route uh i think you've established different routes and you're waiting to have that growth into areas where other people didn't see the potential or they didn't see the potential of you and how strong you are because it's like you're creating your own tower so when i talk about the tower card in the in the tarot um i always say that the tower moments come in to test our foundations um is our have we built a tower that's able to withstand the storms or have we built a tower that is false or built on shoddy foundations and it's going to fall so if you've laid strong foundations and really put down a deep and uh, thick and strong root system your tree will stand tall in the in those tower moments not only will it survive the tower moments but it will continue to grow throughout multiple tower moments and it will continue to survive and grow tall and flourish if people have put down shoddy root systems um you know the first tower is going to wipe that tree out so um yeah establishing yourself and it's taking the time to establish that deep um firm root system so that you can have that um huge amount of growth into areas where other people didn't didn't even see the potential i don't know take it as you will uh something else was coming through there with that um uh, the pigs right the big, big big bad wolf and the three little pigs um what's your house made out of if your house is made out of sticks and straw it's probably going to go blow down in the first storm but if you build your house full of made out of bricks and mortar and uh you lay firm foundations then it's going to withstand those uh those storms okay do take care i hope it was helpful and i'll see you again soon bye, -bye friends